Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to my channel. My name is Sadhana, and this is part two of Divesting Tarot Decks. If you watched the tarot shelf video, you know that it was quite a process for me going through my cupboard and deciding to release about 30 decks from my collection, and these are 15 of them. At the very front is the New Vision, the premium, premium edition of the New Vision Tarot by Los Scarabeo. I believe this is out of print. And as I go through, um, as you watch the remainder of the video, you'll see any changes that I have made to any of the decks. Directly behind that is the standard version of the Dark Mansion Tarot, the first edition. Over here is Ophidia Rosa Tarot by Nicole Rallis of Layla and Olive. And then to the left is a Crystal Unicorn, which is also an indie deck. And to the left of that is Los Garabeo's Rackham Tarot. The Wheel of the Year here is also a Los Garabeo deck. And then behind here we have the Star Spinner Tarot, which is a fairly new deck. And the Hush, uh, which is a U.S. Games mass market publication. The Guardian Angel Tarot, I believe, is also out of print. And that deck has not been shuffled. It's still, the cards are still in the wrapper. And then we have three more at the back here. Sorry for that. The Moonchild Tarot. And Eight Coins Tattoo. This is the mass market version, of course. And this is also a brand new indie deck. This is the second edition of the Mons Tarot by Joanna Nelson. If you are looking for a tarot deck to explore timings and the tarot, the Wheel of the Year tarot might be a good one for you. This is a 2014 Low Scarabeo publication. And I'll just refer to the Little White Book here. Because the structure of the minor arcana of this deck is inexorably linked to the wheel of the year, the list and brief descriptions of these eight sabbats below will help in gaining overall vision of the cards and their place in the seasonal cycle. The numeric cards of the chalices are associated with Imolk. The court cards of chalices are associated with Ostara. And so built into the energy of this deck is a set of timings. And this may be different than you've learned with another deck, but if this is something that is new to you, working with timings associated with divination on the tarot, this deck has a really, um, has the potential for that. So let's have a look at the cards. These are the card backs. And I left this... Um, title card here just because I wanted to show you I have trimmed these the box is in good shape by the way and they're a little bit smaller than the box I have trimmed off the multiple languages and I have not edged these ones it was my intention to edge them in blue but I didn't get to that so let's have a look at a few of the cards. And I haven't writ written on them either, so that's something that you could do if you found that it wasn't close enough to the RWS and you weren't familiar with the meanings. This is the Four of Pentacles. And you can also get a hint of the energy of the timing through the scenery. Three of Pentacles. A really beautiful card. This is one of my favorite cards. I think this is actually the reason why I purchased this deck, the Four of Wands. Makes me so happy. Eight of Pentacles. This Queen of Swords reminds me of the Queen in Snow White, the Disney version of it anyway. 
I'm not sure what that symbol means. Does anybody know what that the symbol refers to? I've never really noticed that before. This is the Ten of Wands. Nine of Swords. This one is great. With the crows or the ravens chasing her. Six of Swords. Four of Cups. And so you get a hint of the season, right? By the, the flowers that are blooming outside. Ace of Pentacles. Tower. That's the world card. That's what the card that's on the box. So actually a really pretty deck. This is the Seven of Cups. I like this one too. Five of Wands. Knight of Pentacles. This is the Dark Mansion Tarot by Tarotica Studios. This is the first edition standard size. Comes in a beautiful hinged box. I don't know if you can see the gold. Yeah, you can see the gold foil details. This is a very high quality production. The reason that I am selling this deck is because it's just not one that I use a lot. One thing I do love about this deck is the intensity of the colors. It's just a beautiful, if you resonate with the artwork, it's a beautiful deck. There's a lot going on in every single card. So if you are the kind of reader who likes to find little tiny details and connect them from card to card, you're going to really like this deck. This reminds me very much of the Nine of Cups in the Osho Zen. It's a lot, those Nine of Cups. The borders in no way detract from the artwork. They really frame it, I think. And there's so many little details around the edge. It's almost like you could, you can see the chain, the chain metal that is the frame, the border frame. Awesome judgment card. A lot of people bring this out around Halloween, but I don't necessarily see this as a Halloween deck. I think you could use this any time of year. For me, it's more of a winter deck. That's the feel I get for it. Show you a couple more three of cups there is no little white book with this deck if i haven't said that already it's really easy to read it it follows the rws system closely this is the crystal unicorn tarot a really pretty little deck I also noticed here that the graphics and the calligraphy is credited as well too, which is really nice. Illustrated by Lisa Higuchi, the creator is Pamela Chen. It comes in a two-part box, which comes uh, separates easily. And I'm just saying that because there's a lot of two-part boxes out there that don't. These are the card backs. I have edged this in a light pink. I did do a couple of coats and it still came out pretty light so very subtle and it did not bleed over at all onto the cards the little white book which I'll show you briefly is quite thin it does have a short introduction and a couple of spreads at the back 
and I will just show you the flavor of the writing in here. So here there's a little introduction to the suit of wands, create a passion and new ideas. The wands govern the energy of movement and growth and are aligned with the earthly energy of the smoky quartz crystal. So built into this deck also is crystal energy. And you'll see that in most, or if not all of the cards. The ace of wands here. Let's just pick another one to read. Five of cups. Take some time to grieve your loss. In time, you will heal, but you can't recover what has been lost. Think about what lessons you have learned from this sorrow so that you won't make the same mistake in the future. The keywords are sorrow, upsetting, hopeless. And then there's three reversed keywords as well, too. And like I said, at the back there is a spread or a couple of spreads. I thought about coloring in this little white book. There's a couple of pages um, like here, I thought it would be fun. Actually, I don't know if Pamela has published a coloring book. This would make a great coloring book. I included this in decks good for children. I purchased this deck for a querent, an 11 year old querent who was interested in learning about the tarot, but also in her spiritual journey. And it was a really special deck to work with, with her, the emperor. Page of cups. So you can see the similarity with the RWS. And if you want to bring in the crystal energy and you know something about crystals, you can build that in as well too. Again, it's a deck that I just, I don't use. So there's no point in keeping it in my collection if somebody else can enjoy it. At the time of recording this, I believe um, you can pre-order a new copy of this deck. It is not out of print. Pamela also is a, a business consultant, I believe, for those who wish to create their own tarot decks. It's all pastel colors, so if you like pastel colors, this is going to be right up your alley. This is the Star Spinner Tarot, an 81 card deck by Trungles. Comes in an amazing box. If you're into boxes, this is a box, a super box. And those are the cards. I have not edged them, done nothing to them. And I have, while I have used this deck, I have not used it a lot. So we'll get to the cards in just a moment. These are three of the lover's cards. One of them is in that pile there. So you get a choice depending on the nature of the reading that you're doing to choose your lover's card to match the energy of the querent. This is the little white book, which I, I don't believe I have not I have not marked up in any way. And what I wanted to read to you was from the introduction. In case you're not familiar with this deck, I think this is important to share. Western interest in the occult and a generous dose of Orientalism greatly informed much of the iconography of the most recognizable tarot decks. At the turn of the century, European tastemakers and artists would often misappropriate imagery from Africa and Asia to convey a superficial sense of mystery and exoticism. And even the classic Rider-Waite-Smith deck is no exception. The star spinner is meant to evoke iconography that is less deeply rooted in that esoteric visual language and challenge the imperialistic trappings of that time. The images draw from children's stories, myths, and fairy tales that might already be familiar to the reader. You will find mermaids with hearts abundant as the ocean, fairies playing between dreaming and waking. You might find the fruit of knowledge hinting at a transition between naivety and knowing, and you'll discover old goddesses of the moon and the sun 
in a new light. So let's have a look at the cards. And these backs are beautiful. So pretty. This King of Wands is absolutely stunning. I can zoom in just a little bit for you here. And let's go this way, just so I don't get a shadow on the cards. The moon. Seven of coins. The reason I'm selling this deck is I do have other fairy tale mythological decks and I don't need another one in my collection. I was intrigued with the multiple level lovers cards and the backstory of the deck. It is a beautiful production. And so I would like to release it into somebody's hands that's going to use it. Great magician card. <laughs> I love the reds in the deck. I did a side-by-side -side comparison of this deck with the Stunning Tarot, which might have seemed odd to a lot of people. But there was something about the reds in this deck that I, I wanted to look at the Stunning side-by-side, -side, which is a deck by Jonas Yaus. Beautiful Fortitude card. Fortitude is number eight. There's your Little Mermaid as the Four of Chalices. Let's look at one more. Page of Wands. The Ophidia Rosa Tarot by Nicole Rallis of Layla and Olive comes in a two-part box. Petals filled with water, cupping the dew, hold the power to tip and feed us the moon. This is the little pamphlet that comes with the deck. And you get a phrase for each of the cards. And I'll read a couple of these in conjunction when we're looking at the cards. So for the Hierophant, Hierophant it says, The one who possesses the highest of wicks will guide us through shadows that flicker and flick. It's very, very poetic. And you get something similar for the, for the miners as well, too. So a short phrase for each of the cards. And then on the back here, I just wanted to read you something Nicole wrote. Something more intuitively tangible was born of the tarot, where even the phases of the moon and the mysterious serpentine movements of creatures in the garden brimmed with the power for prophecy, contemplation, redemption, and a quest. Each of these 78 cards draws on the tarot's time-worn truth carried closer to home. There's always something growing in our hearts, transforming ourselves and our visions from the soil to the stars. She's such a beautiful writer. This is a quite a high quality production. The edges are slightly shiny gold. The cardstock is amazing. And this is a beautiful deck to shuffle. It's one of those beautiful card stocks that is just that perfect thickness where you're not going to damage the cardboard because it's too cardboardy and yet you can still riffle shuffle it it's just just brilliant to hold and touch i am releasing this deck from my collection because again i don't use it and it's not that i don't love it but i don't need to hold on to so many decks Ace of Wands, and I will read a couple of the um, descriptions for you. The use of spider webs in this deck is brilliant. Ten of Wands, and I love the little metaphors that are included here, and I have shared some of these in some of my videos, but the this branch here may or may not have been enclosed at one time. You can see how the spider web has broken free here from the tension, and I like reading those little subtle messages into this deck and the more you know about the flora the more you can bring in to the messages that's the two of pentacles 
Ace of Pentacles. There are a few human items. That's the Hierophant, the, the one I just read to you. Knight. I'll read you the message for the Knight of Pentacles. We follow every call and fear not failure at all. For if the sky bends our stems on the ferns, we will fall. Very pretty sun card. And the moon. Death. Three of pentacles. It's a beautiful, intuitive deck for one who loves plants, botanical energy. Look at that gorgeous Ten of Cups. The conjoining circles. Moonchild, whoever thought I would be releasing this deck, you are the dance of light and shadow. This is a very, also a very fancy production. The box has texture to it. So, and again, a two-part box that doesn't stick together. I use this deck quite a bit when I when I first got it. It is written and illustrated by Danielle Noel. It's an 81 card deck. I'll show you the extra cards right away. These are the three extra cards, Shadow Work, Moon Child, and Divine Wisdom. This guidebook is worth the price of the deck. It is a brilliant, it's one of the very best little white books. Uh, ever in my collection. Copyright 2018. It is so well put together. So much detail about the energy of the moon, the intention of the deck, Mama Luna, lunar history, the goddess, Really interesting uh, take on the history of tarot as well. It's just a brilliant, brilliant book. And then for each of the cards, we have quite a bit of information as well, too. So there is a description of what is going on in the card. There are keywords. There are questions, so journal prompts. The astrological associations, gemstone associations, and then a longer description as well as a reversed. And then for the minors, we have just as much detail. So this really is an excellent, excellent guidebook that you could even use as a resource with other decks. It's that good. These cards are larger than a standard tarot size, so a little difficult to riffle shuffle with small hands. I have a couple of other title cards here. So here's the rack and tarot, which we'll look at in a moment. This one's a little bit bigger. This is another one I'm going to show you. So significantly larger cards than a standard tarot. This has the same edges as the Ophidia Rosa. So slightly shiny. Some people might call this matte. I don't know. There's a little bit of a sheen to it. But it's beautiful. It has not chipped at all. And I do riffle shuffle. I have riffle shuffled. I do riffle shuffle this deck. And um, this, this, this edge has not chipped nor on the previous deck that I showed you. This is a collage deck. Eight of cups. And so you do have the, the cups and the swords and the wands on every card. Five of swords. I always like the veil in this eight of swords. Tower. Mm -hmm. 
we'll look at a few more cards and then I'll fan up the whole deck so you can see the palette, the color of the deck. It really um, goes together well. Five of Wands. Queen of Swords. Empress and Emperor. Interesting how the light is catching her eye there. And the use of the moons as well. Well, throughout the whole deck, it is the moon child tarot after all. And as far as those extra cards, if I were to keep one, I would probably keep one in the deck at a time. I've never shuffled all of them in at the same time. And the Four of Cups. This will give you a better sense of the palette of the cards. Ooh, this is the Ace of Wands. I like this one. The gold. And then here's a few more fanned out so you can get an idea of the colors. This is the premium edition of the New Vision Tarot, which I believe is now out of print by Lo Scarabeo. Comes in a funky box. You can get a standard version still. So the, the this is the little white book and the cards, which I have not altered in any way. The box is in excellent condition. And I will show you the book because this is a unique feature of this Slow Scare Veil book. We do have multiple languages. However, half of the book is English. So this left side is English and then you get a smaller description in the other languages. So these colored pages separate, um, indicate the other, the other languages. So for example here, the descriptions are much, much briefer. So for example here in the suit of cups, here is the Ace of Cups description. And if I go to English Ace of Cups, not only do you get an image, but you get a longer description as well, too. You can see. And in the English version, in the English half front half of the book, you get a description of the old vision as well as the new vision. And then here on the so here for the death card, the old vision of death. Death appears as a skeletal figure in black armor on a ghostly white horse. His banner bears the mystic rose symbol of life and death. So it goes on to describe what a traditional death card, RWS death card, looks like. And then in the new vision, the scene is just the same other than the background landscape. And from this angle, we aren't looking at a lifeless other world and the eternal river of life and death. Turning our back on that scene, we behold the ocean, the primal waters from which all life emerged. As humans, we encounter death many times in our lives. Eventually, it is a literal death, which we all have to face as part of being mortal. But along the way, we must also release those things that no longer serve a purpose. There's a little bit more. Oh, and then also I forgot there's the whole vision part. So there's a, a summary tying together the old vision as well as the new vision. And there's a particular color palette to this deck as well too. I will try to remember to fan it out at the end. I like that six of cups. Okay, well, these are not, these are not, uh, sorry, these are kind of in, a, in an order. I had these out for teaching a class. I also have the before and after tarot, which when you're doing this kind of discussion serves well enough. So I don't need this deck as well too.
You can see it's kind of a muted, muted tones. Would pair really well with a tea stained oracle deck. A tea stained plant deck. I find this one kind of hard to digest. There's the fool moving towards the volcano. And if you would like to see a full walkthrough of any of these decks and I don't include it in the description box below, please let me know and I'm happy to do that as well too if you can't find another one on YouTube. Because of the white borders, it's hard to get a feel for what I was trying to say, but there's a definitely a, a muted, uh, soft energy to the colors in this deck. That's really nice, actually. This is the 2017 mass market version of the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot by Lana Zellner, published by US Games. It comes in a larger box, and it's a two-part box. I have trimmed the cards, so I don't know if you can see, because we're looking at black on black, so they do not fill up the well in the box. And I have edged them in red. We'll look at those in just a moment. I want to show you the brilliant guidebook first. Again, another amazing guidebook. It's really thick. And if I go like this, can you see how it's coated on the side? So it's really easy to reference full color images. So let's have a look at strength. So there's a meaning, a card meaning here, and then a description of the card. And I love it when guidebook writers include the description of the artwork. Our heroine sits in calm, quiet meditation. A lion's head is mounted over hers. She has already defeated the beast. Has she already defeated the beast? Or is she currently willing him to not bite down? Either way, she is in control of the situation with very little physical force. She is not panicking. She is not scared. She is confident in her mental capabilities. Green grass and calm skies are behind her. Life is not grim, though her immediate situation may feel overwhelming. And here is the Eight Coins Rose Tattoo Spread. Included with the deck are earlier iterations of some of the cards. This is the Ten of Cups, an earlier version of the Star, the Three of Cups, and the Nine of Wands. I have not trimmed or edged these ones. And you can see here, I have trimmed and edged the cards in red. It took me many, many coats to get this color, to get the red that I wanted. I was hoping for the intensity of the red that's here, but it was really hard to get that to, to show up. I have done a video of all of the tattoo decks in my collection. If you're interested, I'll put a card up above for that. Page of Swords. I did work with this deck for quite a while after I trimmed and edged it and found it to be a really good reader. Lana did an amazing job 
with the guidebook as well as the detail that she included in the cards. like the little heart on his cheek. It's a great five of cups. Pretty powerful cards are cards, aren't they? more. Five of Pentacles. Guardian Angel Tarot Cards by Radley Valentine. This deck used to have Doreen Virtue's name on the box as well too. It's exactly the same deck, it just doesn't have her name or her, she's not credited in the guidebook as well either. It has a lovely um, cover for the book. This particular copy has not been used and I do not have another Ooh. copy to show you the cards you'll have to go to somebody else's YouTube page to look at them one by one but we will look at the card on the reverse in just a moment I wanted to show you a couple of things in the guidebook here we have the Emperor instead of being called the Emperor it's called organization each of the majors has a different kind of energy around it. A, sorry, similar to the RWS, but in some cases quite different. This is number 11 is strength, called inner strength. And eight is fair decisions. So justice is number eight. And then in the minor suits, four of fire. So four of action. What an incredible achievement. This is a time of prosperity and contentment. Your hard work has paid off. Slightly different energy than uh, Four of Wands. Sounds more like a, yeah, anyway, not Four of Wands. Nine of Wands. It's a very uplifting, very positive kind of deck. And the people who love this deck really, really find it comforting. There's some quite um, gentle and affectionate videos out there of this. So Two of Cups. Two of emotion, a relationship moves into a deeper, more meaningful phase. And the, I'm not sure, I'll also show you the uh, court cards have different names as well, too. So the pages are messengers, knights are helpers. So the suit of swords is the suit of thought. The queens are healers, and the kings are guardians. And the band I will I will leave on. Gold edges, shiny gold edges, and this is the full card, a new beginning. The Rackham Tarot was published by Lo Scarabeo in 2019. This is the box. It's in great shape. Title card. I have several decks in my collection that I refer to as storytelling decks. And the reason that I am releasing this deck, selling this deck, is because I just use the other ones more. It's quite a beautiful deck. If you're a fan, a lover of Rackham's artwork, you'll like this deck. This is the Chariot. I mentioned in my tarot shelf video that this the color is a little bit looks a bit light on the screen the color is really nice it's quite saturated i'll see if i can adjust that when i when i am um, when i edit this reminds me so much of the, the chitty chitty bang bang scene this is the ten of pentacles beautiful real sense of community I don't know if I finished my thought or not. I'm going to read to you a couple of the lines from the guidebook just so you can see that there is indeed 
even though the lines in the Little White Book are very brief, there is a connection between the artwork and what is written in the guidebook. It's, it's not just a regurgitation of the RWS. This is the wheel. Ten of Wands. This, does this not remind you of a card in Anna Kay? It never f ceases to amaze me how, you know, subconsciously, we never know how certain paintings or images are going to stick with us. This is the Seven of Wands. Star. Let's look up this one. Justice. Stand and face the consequences of your choices. Justice is unrelenting and she cannot be moved by entreaty or excuses. She is merciless in her righteous effort of natural law. The key concepts are justice, integrity, fair dealings, legal and ethical matters. It's a beautiful painting. And let's look at another one. So this is the Five of Swords. This one is a little different interpretation, if I recall correctly. A threat approaches. So this is five of air, five of swords. A threat approaches, a hidden plot, an unexpected challenge. Be alert to those who covet your power. We can see here there is a princess or a queen or somebody of nobility hidden in the trees here. Very dynamic Knight of Wands. It's quite a poignant moon card. Hermit. Three of Wands. So that's very different perspective than we would see in an RWS card. A situation at rest. Success is slowing down temporarily. Assess your achievements so far and determine your next step. What I see here, and I mentioned earlier decks that are great for storytelling, is to not necessarily go back and see what the intention was of the creator, but to allow the cards to weave a story. And this is the beauty of reading tarot intuitively. The Hush Tarot by Jeremy Hush was published by US Games, came out this year, 2020, comes in a, in a two-part box. And I fanned the cards out for you here, so you can just see this array of earthy tones of greens and golds and browns. It's really pretty. This is a deck that I suppose I could put back on my shelf and spend some more time with. There's a lot that's going on in these images and I, for example, in the Eight of Cups, the relationship between that fairy and the owl, I, I want to sit with that and explore that and perhaps this is a, an amazing deck to do path work with to enter into this mysterious world. Sometimes the human-esque figures look like humans, other times they look more like fairies. And to contemplate the, the energy of the two birds in the foreground of the temperance card here, sometimes we get information in the guidebook and sometimes we don't. I love this wheel card. It's so beautiful. And the power of the ant on that leaf and the relationship of the size of the the river to the ant and the leaf and the, it's just a it's a really profound card the beauty of the flowers overhead the ferret so for example on the fool card we get an explanation of the ferret but that is one of few cards where we do and in this eight of pentacles it would have been nice to to me it looks like the artist is creating like these are the demons in the mind of the artist but this is the pentacle suit right if this were the suit of swords i might kind of understand that 
And so, again, another deck where it's important to, to read the art and not be attached to what a particular card is supposed to mean. It is haunting. Haunting in a way, it reminds me a little bit of the Guardian Tarot. In many of the cards, there's a deep responsibility, a, a connection between the environment and the relationship of animals to humans and how they support or don't support each other. Incredible Ten of Swords. Hmm, <laughs> maybe I'm going to go back on this one. Queen of Swords, with the bird in her crown. Nine of Cups. I'm also contemplating what season this card feels like. This is the Seven of Pentacles. And so we have the key here is attached to her leg. We have a bird over the right shoulder. There's so much that could be read into this. I like that King of Swords. I get that one for sure. Hmm. All right. I may just spend some more time looking at this deck after I finish recording. Last one. Ooh, look at that. There is, almost looks, well, we have a face here. And then this string, this reminds me very much of a, of a card in Sassare Bito. Also, the way this leaf is going here, it looks almost as if something is being poured into the mouth. Does this represent voice, the connection of voice between the human and the bird? So cool. Ace of Pentacles. This is the second edition of the Mons Tarot, self-published by Joanna Nelson. I coveted this deck so much, and then I received it and realized I don't know how or when I'm ever going to use this deck. It's a beautiful box. These are large cards. I want to start by saying that. So if you have small hands, just over shuffling probably is all you'll be able to do. The size of the cards, which I will put in the description box below. I know people were commenting on the measurements for some of the larger decks in the previous video. But this is Tarot of the Hidden Realm. So you can see it's significantly uh, taller and wider as well. I did not edge them. That was my intention to edge them blue, but I haven't haven't touched them. So let's have a look at the cards and also we'll have a look at the little guidebook that comes with them. Here's the High Priestess. One of the things in this deck that I do like are the little touches, like the, the sprinkles of magic and fairy dust over in the corner there. I did a side-by-side -side comparison of Mons with another deck, and I will link that in the card above and in the description box below. There is a sweetness, and this definitely falls into the category of a deck that you could use with younger people, or a deck where some of the more forthcoming, <laughs> forthcomingly illustrated decks are just not appropriate. Oh, 
the whole deck is in this color palette of purples and greens and blues. It follows the Rider Waite Smith system. This sun cord is absolutely gorgeous. Joanna has signed every card here. You can see it on the, the stem of the flower. So let's go to the guidebook and we'll just have a look at Joanna's interpretation of the cards. Carrying a very special tree branch as his scepter and wearing a sacred wrap around his fur, the Hierophant stands between two birch trees, burning one white ritual candle upon his antler. He is an educator and here to share his wisdom experience the old ways and traditions. So for each card you have an artistic interpretation and then a card meaning. You have a choice between listening to advice and following the conventional path or ignoring others and going it alone. The Hierophant recommends that you go with the flow in this situation. He is a traditionalist, a role model, and has wisdom to impart. The trees forming pillars behind him are suggestive of an entrance way. He can open doors to you and act as a guide, offering illumination, the candle on his antler, but only if you listen to his teachings and play by the rules. Knight of Wands, energetic, bold, and passionate. Balancing on the tip of a leaf, the knight is ready for adventure and to take action. A flame burns hot on the back of his helmet. He stares wide-eyed and bursting with energy to charge forward. I love the candle melting on his head. <sighs> so funny. <laughs> we have the salamander. This is the Illuminary, the extra card in the deck, revealing the unseen hope and guiding light. As darkness fills the sky, the Luminary brings warmth and light to those around her. Pure, vibrant energy blazes through the night as it pours forth from her hands and attire. Two lighty flies are harnessing her energy to use as a guiding light. The Luminary resides in the perfect place between the dark and the light. And the description continues a little bit on. So this is the little book that is included with the deck. Thank you for joining me on this brief tour through decks that I am releasing from my collection. Let me know if you have any questions or there's details about the decks that weren't clear through the videos. And I can chat with you in the comments below or you can email me directly through my website. Thanks for watching. Namaste.